In this video, we will be answering the question on the screen from the 2022 Ordinary Level Maths Exam, Paper 1. If you are looking for any other questions from this paper, there will be a link in the description to a playlist that will have them all. And this is question six. It's gonna be a sequence and series question. Part A1, well, part, part A, first of all, um, gives us this formula here for Tn is equal to minus 254 plus n minus one multiplied by four. And uh, this is quite common to see this, Tn and Sn, you see these in a lot of questions. All this is saying is, it's giving you every term. I'm gonna write, uh, let me put the terms up here because I'm gonna use them a lot. Uh, I'll put little dashes for them. And the first term, the second term, the third term, and so on. This is gonna go on for a good while. So this is T1, this is T2, the first term, the second term, the third term. They're asking you for the first term and it's very easy to find with this sort of thing. T1, they're telling you. They're telling you every T. T1 is equal to, I'm just gonna write this again. T1 equals minus 254 plus, instead of N, instead of N, I'm writing one. I'm writing a one there. Everything else is the same. This is identical to this, except everywhere I see an N, I'm putting a one. That's all, we clean this up. Uh, let's see, one minus one is zero. Zero multiplied by four is zero. So all we're left to is minus 254. When you get more used to these questions, you'll actually look at this and say, well, that's the first term right there. That's, that's not always the case, so I would do it a little slower, especially in your exam, you have, you have time. Okay, so for part two, they then ask you to find um, the common difference, and they give you a hint. They tell you to get T2 minus T1. Now, this is a very common question as well, but they don't always tell you this part. They might just say, find the common difference. And how we do that is, well, let me first put the number here, minus 254. The common difference in an arithmetic sequence, that's one that adds together, is the difference between these two, or these two, or these two. Basically, if you can find two numbers beside each other, take them away and you find the difference. Now, we already have one, so getting T2 should be quite easy, uh, quite easy to get the difference. And we get T2, so forget this, we'll just find T2, because we know T1 already. T2 is the same as we just did up here. Everywhere I see an N, I'm gonna write a two. Minus two, five, four, plus instead of the N, I'm writing a two, and that's it. And we clean this up a bit. Two minus one is one. One multiplied by four is four. Four minus 254 is minus 250. That's the second term. 250. So they're just asking us, what's the difference? T2 minus T1. T2 minus T1 is equal to minus 250 minus minus 254. There is a minus, there's a minus here and there's a minus on T1. Put this into a calculator if you're bad at multiple minuses, but the answer is four. This is four bigger, it's plus four, not minus four, it's four bigger. It looks like it's getting smaller, but this is a mind, think of it, you owe, you owe a lot of money, you owe less money, you owe less money, you owe less money. That means your, your total amount of money is getting bigger, in fact. All right, and we could go ahead and just make these numbers up now. We are adding four every time. Four off of this debt, four off, it's, it gets complicated with minus numbers, I admit. The next one's minus two, four, six, minus two, four, two. I'm sorry if you can't see it too well there. And this will stay going on. All right, uh, that, and that, in fact, this staying going on brings us to part B. And here's part B up here. It looks the same as part A. It's the same formula we had for TN. And they're asking us to solve this equation. Now, I like this question because it's really interesting that they're asking us to do algebra, but we could do it without doing algebra. What this is saying is, this was T1, T2, T3, this was Tn. 
And they're saying, when is it, um, sorry, it should be greater than zero, shouldn't it? Yes. So when is it greater than zero? Well, have a look here. It's getting, it's going closer to zero every time. There is a point after a bit of a while, it's going to, um, it's going to, Actually, it's not going to hit zero, but it's going to cross over the zero point. There's going to be a point here that's a minus number, and there's going to be a point where it's a plus number. I think, uh, I think it should be a minus two and a plus two. So it's going to cross past the zero point at some point. That's what this is asking. This is negative, 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 negative. There is some point where it's going to be positive. They're asking, when is that? You could do this a couple of ways. Uh, you could just think it through you could say well it gets smaller by four every time divide four into this number should get you fairly close you could also just guess some answers maybe t20 see where that brings you should be a minus still t100 see where that brings you should be somewhere over on the plus side so you could guess some answers i'm going to show you how to do the algebra way and um, because it'll come up in other parts as well so we just solved this equation. Think of this like an equals. It's very similar to an equals. It's only one or two exceptions and it won't come up in this part. So uh, let's go ahead and try and solve it. Here's a bracket we can multiply out. We get minus 254 plus four times n is four n. Four times minus one is minus four. And that's bigger than zero. Minus 254 minus another four minus 258 again I may have said already but if you have trouble with minus numbers lots of students do just use a calculator just be careful typing it in minus 254 minus 4 will tell you this answer uh, plus 4 n is greater than 0 let's get rid of this guy by adding plus 258 to both sides that will disappear and we'll add 258 to this side. Okay, let's get rid of the n by dividing both sides by four. If you divide by a minus number, something happens, but we're not here. So we're dividing by plus four. That'll disappear. Four divided by four is one. So one n is greater than two, five, eight divided by four, which um, n is greater than, what have I got here? 64. Point five. Now, lots of students would, will make a mistake now. They'll leave this as their answer. No, th this is the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term. They, this tells us that when it crosses over the zero point, it's bigger than 64.5. Well, then that must be the 64th term and that must be the 65th term. That's what they're telling us there. This is terms, so we can't have a half. So if n is bigger than 64.5, then n must be either 65 or 66 or 67, and this stay going on forever. But they also ask us to find the smallest answer. So all of these are answers. n is bigger than 64 and a half. Well, all of these are correct, but which is the smallest and that's the answer is 65 so maybe n equals 65 we could write as our answer okay on to part uh, c they tell us that sn sn is equal to this formula here and sn is they don't tell us this yet sn is the sum of all of some series actually they don't tell us it's the same sequence but it is we can tell that by by just some of the numbers in it. Uh, I guess you don't know that. And I'm gonna show you how to solve it without knowing that. But I've left these numbers here from part A and B because it's the same series we're talking about. So when they're talking about the sum, S1 would be just the first number. S2 would be this number plus this number. S20 would be the first 20 numbers. And they then separately ask us to find out when this formula is equal to zero. Solve for n. Basically, they're asking us what term. S2 would be this number plus this. There's some number of s, s, maybe 100, that when you add them all together, the answer is zero. 
And this again is very interesting because there's a couple of ways to answer this. And um, the first part we learned that this is 64 and we learned this is 65. So I can actually guess the, I'm gonna guess the answer first and then show you how to do it with algebra. Um, yeah, if I were to guess the answer, there's one, two, three, all the way up to 64, 65. If I add two plus minus two is zero. The next number here would have been minus six. And the next number here would have been six. If I had six plus minus six, that's zero. So if I just stay going out all that way, I should get zero. So at, at 64.5 times two is 128, 29. So I think 129 should be the answer. Just from symmetry of those. You're not expected to answer it that way. I'm gonna show you how you would answer this question then. We're gonna solve this with algebra. So we have an equals, we have only one thing we don't know, n. So we should be able to rearrange this question and solve it. Okay, first of all, these things outside the bracket, they're acting on everybody. So we better deal with them first. Let's get rid of the two first. If we multiply the left by two, that'll cancel. Multiply the right by two. Zero times two is zero. If we divide the left by n, that'll cancel. If we divide zero by n, well, that's still zero. So we're actually left with two times this, which I can do already, is my, use a calculator if you're not good at these sums in your head, minus 508, minus 508, plus 4n, minus four is equal zero, and minus 508 minus four is minus 512, plus 4n is equal zero, Add this number to both sides, add 512 to both sides, we get zero there, 4n is equal 512. Divide both sides by four. Uh, this divided by four in a calculator is 128. Ah, it looks like I was wrong. My guess was close. You gotta give me that, but I was actually wrong. It's 128. Um, ah, because the first number is one, I was, I was assuming it was zero maybe. Something, I, don't, I don't know what I did wrong, to be honest. Uh, still, it was a close guess. Now that I've done it properly, I know I'm probably right because it's close to where I guessed it was. All right, that's, um, yeah, that's all for part C. I hope that was in some way a help. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. Until next time, have a great day.